So we're here in Abidjan, Cote d'Ivoire with Cedric Dofu, co-founder and communication specialist of Lufi Led. Thank you so much for making the time to meet with us. My pleasure, my pleasure. So to begin with, maybe you can explain what exactly is Leafy LED and what is your mission? Okay, so Leafy LED is a, an Ivorian-based company. We specialize in the energy sector. So through our solutions, we're trying to solve uh, two, even three problems at the same time, meaning access to electricity and access to connectivity. So what we're doing is we're using renewable energy sources, mainly solar power, in order to light LED light bulbs and using that lighting in order to communicate and transmit data and access high-speed internet. How did you come up with the idea? So, uh, it's my, my co-founder and I, we came up with this idea after an experience that he had. He was stuck in a, in a field uh, in the country of Côte d'Ivoire and he was without internet, without lighting, and he found that unacceptable. Uh, in the modern days, finding yourself in a remote area with no access to communication tools. So as an engineer, he came up with the idea to use lighting as a means of communication and um, uh, internet connection. And then we partnered up and started this venture together. What were the specific steps that you took from, okay, um, we are out here, there's no electricity, we have to do something about it. What was the next step? So the first step was acknowledging that there was a problem and then finding the solution. Since uh, the leafy LED technology is a recent technology, I think we're the, the, the only ones in Africa using that technology. So first of all, we had to get all of the, uh, let's say, the documentation, find the engineers to start building this, uh, this product. And then afterwards, seeing as we were trying to solve a problem that was also a problem that the government saw it was important to solve, we received a lot of government support in terms of creating the company and also accompanying us throughout the different steps. So we did not face that many difficulties, even though it was challenging to uh, gather all the resources, mainly the financial resources, as you can imagine. Yeah, so how did you, how did you fund the whole project? Okay, so we started with uh, our own funds. And then afterwards, we, we were awarded grants and some uh, subsidies from the government. And also, we started uh, our own production, so we have our own clients in order to, let's say, uh, be self-sufficient. Uh, oh, okay. You mentioned that you're probably the only um, company in Africa that's using this technology. Did you have any prior uh, exposure to the technology or how did you learn about it? How did you go about adapting it for the market here and so on? So as I said, my co-founder is uh, an engineer, an engineer yeah. so he's well familiar with these types of uh, products. So, and I think he's, also, he's studied abroad as well. So since I think the, the technology was uh, used uh, in Europe and the United States uh, first, so he had uh, that information, being an engineer, being a specialist in that domain. So he was able to bring it back to Africa and try to adapt it, adapt it to our context. What other challenges did you have other than funding? Uh, our access in the market. You know, we have uh, other network operators that provide uh, internet connection. So it's tough for us, especially in urban areas, to, uh, I, I guess, to spread out our solutions because they are really deeply, let's say, entrenched in this market. So accessing the market is a difficulty that we had and still have. We are mainly in the rural areas, as we said. So. We'll say that accessing the market, manufacturing our products locally are the main challenges that we have to face. What exactly are your products? So our products range from basic LED bulbs that only allow you to light your house. And we have the uh, LED bulbs that allow you to access a leafy net. That's how we call the internet connection that we get through that light bulb. We also have our poles, um, lamp posts, for uh, urban lighting, um, we also have provide services, uh, data mining, um, internet access, and whatnot. So mainly LED lighting and internet through LED lighting. Yeah. Is it affordable for the people in the rural communities? Um, 
for and setting up the lamppost that will grant them access to the internet is not a, for them to pay for. Usually the local, uh, I think authorities have to pay for that or even a company. What they can do is they can purchase what we call a pass in order to access internet and it's usually a dollar a day for them to have access to that internet connection. So uh, I don't know if it's affordable for them since they're in rural areas, but I can definitely say it's something they can pay for eventually. How have you been able to measure the impact that the company is having? So we've had uh, three projects already, three pilot projects. We have already started implementing our solutions in three uh, regions of the country. So we've seen the impact already, uh, seeing that the population are having access to lighting, to internet, having access to resources, information relevant to the domain. Some of them are uh, farmers, so they need uh, information with regard to the weather and uh, I don't know, new agricultural practices. So through that internet access, they can get information on the weather forecast and information around the, I don't know, new fertilizers, for example. So this has really helped them develop their activity and uh, for the students as well, uh, uh, every time we set up a uh, lamppost, for example, in a, in a region, what we do is we train the, the youth um, on the new communication tools and try to upgrade them on that, on that particular field. So that's the impact we've had. We've seen that they, used, they still use uh, our solutions up till today. And we've also had a, a partnership with uh, the government in setting up a solution in a different region and it has helped light a school. So we've seen the impact. The impact is there to, to, to be witnessed. Thank you so much for, for sharing so far. Um, I'm very curious for someone that doesn't have the technical background, what is the advantage of leafy LED to, in, uh, in comparison to normal traditional internet? Uh, I was hoping for this question. So <laughs> the advantage of leafy LED, first of all, we're using renewable energy sources. So less pollution, less uh, greenhouse gas emissions. And then since we're using um, the light spectrum as, a, as opposed to radio, magnet, uh, radio electromagnetic magnetic waves, so it's safer for the human body and then less pollution for the environment. And also since the leafy LED bulbs, they use up less energy. So you have, uh, uh, I guess, uh, to pay less for your energy bills and, and whatnot. So safer for you as a person better for your pocket since you're paying less and the bulbs last longer and also safer for the environment. And the internet connection is 30 to 100 times faster than the normal Wi-Fi that we all use. Wow, I'm glad that you mentioned the last point because yeah, internet speeds oftentimes are a challenge. Yes, especially here in Cote d'Ivoire where we know that access to internet is very expensive and if you want broadband instant internet, it's even more expensive. But with our solutions, uh, with a dollar a day, for example, they can have access to internet that is up to a hundred times faster than normal Wi-Fi. So I think that is something that could be very useful for our, our fellow citizens. So uh, just for me to understand, if you go into a new region uh, and you say, okay, let, let us bring leafy led solutions to that region, what is the exact process? You go in, you put up a, a tower or how, how does it work? So how it basically works, we for example, we can have a company that uh, orders our product, or it can be maybe uh, the local authorities that will order the, the product. So we go there, we are welcomed by the populations because we're bringing light. And we know that here light brings hope. So they're really happy to see us. We set up the lamppost. So we have different products depending on what they've ordered. We have lampposts, we have uh, the leafy terminal. So that's a different product that allows us not only to provide internet access and lighting, but also communicate because there's a LED screen where we can have weather forecasts, television shows, and also have a, a space for companies to advertise if they want. So depending on the product that has been ordered, either by the government, the local authorities, or a company or contractor over there, we set up the solution. And then there's light, access to light, access to internet, and then the populations over there will just have to purchase the pass that I mentioned earlier on. Okay, so that means, so the last, so for the consumer to get the internet, it will be light transmitted internet basically. Yes. 
how does the internet get to the to the device that sends the information? Is that like a do I have to imagine like one central tower or how how does that work? Is it is it uh, by yes, a I think it's satellite or satellite, yes, okay. satellite. Okay, so the internet gets to that location through satellite through and then satellite. the distribution is through the LED yes. lights. Exactly. Okay, okay. so the last, uh, the last little bit of uh, information transfer is what actually where you have the innovation and what makes it so much faster exactly. uh, for the consumer. So we access the internet through satellite. Mm -hmm. I think we have a small antenna on the top of our mechanism. And then after we've accessed that, we use the LED light spectrum in order to transmit the data and the internet connect wow. connection. Why has no one else thought of that before or done that here? Do you know? I mean, <laughs> since it's a new technology, maybe they did not know how to use it or maybe they did not really know, know it existed. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's our luck there. Mm -hmm. what, what did you personally do before Leafy LED? Do, did you always think okay i'm gonna become an entrepreneur or well, well uh, while i was studying i always said to myself i would rather work for myself so i think i had this entrepreneur let's say fiber in myself so that's how i went into, into this quote-unquote game and started doing my let's say our own thing yes so you were already open open yes. to it did you have anyone uh, inspiring you to say, okay, it's possible to work for yourself, maybe your parents or a mentor, or did you just always have that? And Yes, uh, a mentor, since my co-founder is a little bit more experienced than myself. He was kind of my mentor in this adventure and, and maybe like taking me by the hand and taking me through the steps since he's has, he has way more experience than I do in this uh, field. He's been an entrepreneur for a, uh, over a decade now, so he's really been helpful and instrumental to us starting this journey together. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so you had a previous entrepreneurial experience and then you could learn from that and really yeah, grow yeah, in this I project. I had entre entrepreneur Will, he had the experience. Experience, yeah, yeah. yeah. What did your family and friends say when you said, okay, you know, I'm not going to take a nine to five job, yeah. I'm going to start this business that's going to bring 30 to 100 times faster internet to rural regions and bring light what was their reaction so my my uh, let's say my model was always to make money while making an impact so i think my parents and friends relatives they were always very supportive always they were always telling me you're young i mean you can still try it out if it doesn't work you'll still have the opportunity to go get a nine to, a nine to five job so they were always telling me go ahead it doesn't matter if you fail. We hope you won't, though. But go ahead and, yeah, just just go for it. So I, I was lucky enough to have their support, lucky enough to be with a person that had the experience and the knowledge in the, let's say, entrepreneurial world to allow me to go forward with this idea and go and meet my, I guess, my destiny here. Yeah, yeah, great. Um, you know, I'm still very curious because your, your project sounds very bold, right? Not, not everybody thinks about, okay, I'm, you know, I'm going to bring internet to a country, you know, and especially to rural areas. Yes. It's usually something that big established companies do with crazy funding. Um, yet you said, okay, this idea is valuable. Let's do it. And I'm just very interested about your market entry strategy. Yes. Like, am I correct in the assumption that the easiest part to implement is just to bring LEDs, to bring light, and that the internet is the more difficult part? I mean, both parts are difficult, seeing as we have established companies selling LED light bulbs already. Mm -hmm. But what was that's how we saw it. We saw it as an innovation using that LED, not only just the light, but also to access internet. So it was seen as an inter innovation and welcomed by the, uh, we would say, competitors. Mm -hmm. And we have had also the support of a network operator here that helped us implement our solutions in some of the regions because they're not really interested in those rural areas. So that's, that was to answer your question, our market entry strategy. We started off with the rural areas knowingly because we knew that 
those network operators were not that well established over there and they did not see those areas as being really relevant seeing as uh, the population there was not really important and it wouldn't be beneficial for their own market so what we did is we started uh, accessing low, uh, rural areas started intervening over there and more and more we hope to bring our solutions to more urban areas because in the rural areas we, we could say we are uh, pioneers over there, mm -hmm. but uh, we know that the main market is in the, the urban cities. areas. Yeah. Okay. Wow. So basically you said, okay, we cannot do it alone. We have to partner and let's partner with established uh, telco providers um, because they don't see any business there and we can make a viable business model for them if they, if they partner with us for the road. Exactly. Areas. Wow, that's pretty smart. But we're hoping now to bring our solutions to urban areas. So that's uh, the next step. So you will partner in the rural areas, but compete in the, in the urban yes, setting? Yes, most likely, <laughs> yes. Okay, that's great. Yeah, because even here in the urban setting, I mean, I would love to have faster internet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Please do. Who <laughs> wouldn't? Yeah. Was there ever, you know, a time where you thought, okay, this is not going to work out or where, you know, like a true challenge or a day where you thought, oh my goodness, I don't know what the next step can be or... You know, the, you're, there are always times where you feel like you're lost or not, don't know where you're going, what the next step is. But the thing is, since I'm not alone, uh, if I lose or hope or faith, my co-founder and partner will, will give me a nudge and be like, yeah, we have to do this. And then we'll refocus on the priorities and yes, keep hope and keep going forward. Yeah, I think that's good that you mention it because I think that's one of the main benefits of having a team. Yes. Um, but also of having a strong vision and a, and a strong why that can uh, propel you to yeah. uh, keep, keep at it. Because as an entrepreneur, especially when you're starting off, you have so many things to manage, so many things to handle, and you might feel overwhelmed or... Uh, over, I don't know, overbooked and you don't know what to do, what not to do. So it's good to have a team of experienced persons and of persons that have the same motivation that can drive you. And even if you're losing a little bit of motivation, they'll give you a little bit of theirs and you'll go back at it again. Uh, how, do you, how do you keep yourself motivated and, uh, you know, working and, and productive because I mean I've started my own businesses and especially in the beginning it's like the, the day does not have enough hours in a way. Yes. How do you personally uh, do that? Do you have any routines or? Um, no special routine. We just work as much as we possibly humanly can <laughs> and then when the body says it's time to sleep you just sleep because what motivates us, what drives us is the impact when you bring light just light and you see how it lights up people's faces and you feel that you're making a great impact and that's motivation in itself and it, it drives us, yes. Uh, it's great. Other people, other entrepreneurs, they use it as a metaphor. We're bringing light, but for you it's quite literal. Yes, that's literal. <laughs> <laughs> what would be your advice to a young person from Kutiwa today? Uh, my advice would be... Uh, know exactly what you want to do try to have a plan a clear plan in mind have it try to have it in writing as well maybe get advice from experienced persons around you and your entourage and be bold determined and motivated be willing to go through those challenges because uh, yes there's light ahead yeah Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you very much for uh, uh, giving us this time and hopefully we hope to see you again.